Hello and welcome back. Now this was uh, not a planned uh, part or extension to this bonus um, video, but I noticed that people um, really like the Y Angular bonus video and they really like looking at you know creating a quick to do application. So I thought, okay, so I showed why we would use Angular. I think, in my opinion, hopefully you're convinced by watching the previous four par parts. Um, but it's easier to do more complex stuff with. And there's something else that I'll be using um, in the overall course, and that is going to be Angular Material, which is a, uh, a, a module for Angular that gives you some really nice UI components. So I thought, why not also add to this um, teaser video, this bonus teaser video, um, you know, the Angular Materials, showing you how our application could look a little bit better. So I'm going to do that um, in this video. And so let's just jump right in and see if we can finish in 15, 20 minutes. All right. So this is our application that we had the last time. And this is where we ended. And uh, look here in Git plugin. You see that our repository is clean. And I'm already running the application. And this is it, right? And so we had a text box. And we can say, you know, buy milk or something. Buy milk as a to-do. We send that started and save it. And there it is. And, you know, we'll, well, it seems like I've broken our application because I think when you save it, we're clearing this link, clearing this out, and no, it's not clearing, but maybe I did something. Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, did I do something to, to break this? Um, clear inputs, you know, that should have been called from save to do, blah, 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 whatever. So that should have been called and be clearing out, but uh, maybe I broke something. Um, I don't know. I'll check it out later. But the important thing is what I want to do to get this to look like a much nicer application in terms of using Angular material. You can see, look here, we are using a table and we're adding stuff, okay? And so let's see how we can integrate Angular material. So go to material, the AngularJS.org, and see, it shows up there already. And then uh, if you click on getting started, You'll see how to set up Angular JS. There's a um, Angular material. There's a getting started example here. So we kind of look at it and we see oh, from the HTML tag, we have an application which we already have. In head, there's some stuff. So why don't we do that? Why don't we connect, copy all the stuff that they have in head? Uh, we'll jump over to our application, stick that in our head. Um, I'm going to highlight it and then at the end, and then I'll say beautify. But anyway, if you have the beautify plugin. Uh, the other thing we see, it looks like, okay, so on the body, they have, you know, this layout column. Um, all this is saying is by default, when we're all the sub elements, uh, all the uh, elements that are visual in the body, by default, it wanted to be in a columnar lay layout, which means basically just stack one on top of the other. So this is like a columnar layout. If you put some this text and then this text, it just automatically show up as one on top of the other. Don't worry about it. Just trust me that that's what it means. <laughs> so, um, so in the body, they're saying, okay, that's what we want to use, columnar layout. So that's what they want to use. And so we'll go with it because there's no reason not to say that though. Uh, if I put welcome, you know, whatever, that should be um, in the first uh, above whatever comes next and just stack these things, right? Basically, this is what we have anyway, right? Um, well, there's my application. This is what we have is stuff that are stacked on top of each other. And it's going to be looking messed up for a while as we try to convert over, but um, let's just keep going. And then we already have a controller for ours. Uh, we can ignore this toolbar for now. And what we're going to do is instead, oh, and then so here are the dependencies. Oh, so uh, we could see it requires, you know, Angular, Angular Animate, Angular Aria, and then Angular Material. So we already have Angular JS already, but I'll copy back over the whole thing and just go scroll to the bottom here and paste it here because we already have Angular JS and then they add some other things. So I'll just paste it up above the stuff that we have. And then of course we need our own application script, which is this. And let me apply, um, let me, uh, yeah, select everything and beautify it a little bit, clear it up. Okay, save it. All right, so we have that. 
And then uh, if you go to the JavaScript, we're going to ignore the CSS for, for a minute. So you go to the JavaScript, we're going to ignore it completely. You can see here, when we create our module, we used to leave this empty because we didn't have any dependency. Well, here's where you say that my application I'm creating, module I'm creating, depends on some other module. Over here we didn't say it depends on the AngularJS uh, material module. So let's just go over and do that in our application and scroll to the top. And where is our application? Oh, there it is. And we'll say it depends on that. All right, so that's pretty much all we have to do. Let's just basically um, include some link to some CSS um, that Angular Material uses um, to find some silly thing for viewport and all that stuff, which you just copy and paste without thinking about it. Uh, include the script that represents the Material library, but that have dependency on Aria and Animate, and that's it. And of course, it depends on AngularJS, so you include that first. And then, so those two things, some things in the HTML file, and then the one thing here is say I depend on this module. Now we can go ahead and start using it in our HTML file. And so one of the first thing we can kind of do is um, let's check out um, some of the directives that Angular Material gives us. And you could look at the demo, uh, you know, autocomplete, card, box, all this other stuff. But I'm going to jump down straight to the directives here. And one of them is called content. And so MD content. And it says that, oh, you can put this attribute if you want your stuff to be padded. Well, if not, don't put it if you don't want things to be padded. So I can copy that. And I'll just, you know, paste it in and say I have some content. And uh, what, what about if I put this in here? All right. And um, again, I'll have to keep doing this. I, w I prefer an editor that just automatically, you know, uh, would beautify for me as I type, uh, but we, this is the editor we're using. Okay, and so let me refresh. Uh, there we go. And a, a whole lot, <laughs> it didn't look like anything changed really. Like, oh, why, why, why am I doing this? So let's keep going. And I'm gonna paste that. Oh, I'm gonna create an MD dash content and because um, layout dash padding um, actually okay and um, because I said I thought my layout for this body anything in here comes one on top of the other this is gonna be you know on top of this and I don't really don't need to wrap this welcome inside of content. The only reason I do this is to get some padding, but I, I really didn't have to. So it, it wasn't all up to the edge like this. Um, but, you know, I, and I, I couldn't even say I wanted center. We can actually look at that later if we have time. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy my form and I'm going to put that inside of this body. I'm going to save it. So there's the form. And again, if I refresh, you can see anything different than again the shifted over a little bit because I say it's gonna be padded padded. Now let's look at I have label here and a name and then I have um, this input box and actually this input box um, didn't have a name to match up with the label but never mind all that. Let's just keep going with the angle we're doing the angle material way. I'm say MD dash input that container container if I could spell it and then inside the input container we want to stick our label and let me beautify that again this is annoying and so inside our input container we have a label and I can take that back and I have an input box okay and I can actually well I can say that though the description is required. I could say, um, you know, like required equals true. All right. And now when I refresh, look at how my input text box changed to this nice input note that when you're not on it, it shows red to tell you, though, oh, it's required. And once I start typing, notice how I'm um, thinking. Now I can even set a maximum size. So if I wanted the description to be 
maximum of 150 characters. I could say, um, for example, uh, MD max, I think it is, um, equals to 150, I think, or let's say 100. And I could go back and I look and see if that's actually the right way to do it. Uh, so that wasn't the right way. So let's go back here and I can look at input and oh, MD max length, uh, max length. And then I go back here and I refresh and there it is zero to 100 and I click on it and then it tells me and blah, blah, blah. And if I type more than 100, um, you'll see it will turn red because um, oh, it's supposed to turn red. When I click away, yeah, there it is, it turned red. If I take off one and I click away, it doesn't turn red, okay? It doesn't turn red while I'm typing, but so we get this nice input and we get some other things like that sort of thing there, right? We get nice animation, um, as you saw before, when there was nothing there, how it showed like this, and then when I click on it, so that's pretty cool. So our thing is already looking up, right? What about a select um, select box here? Can we do something nice with that? And it just so happened that, yes, we can. So we can do MD. You can look at the directive to see too. Input container. And I can move my select inside of it. And uh, I, I believe this is right. I could go back and look. Beautify. And then I could do, I think, MD select change this md dash select and then these guys become md dash option md dash option md dash option and i believe that is correct and we could go verify before we continue so if i do md select uh yep it's inside our input container md select md option and so that's save and i go and i refresh and this is what my selection now look like right um well, we see something just now. Well, okay, so this doesn't is not rendering cor correctly right now, but we'll, like, we'll, we'll fix that, okay? But at least we have this nice um, input thing. Uh, it looks like it's done in everything in one line, and I don't know why that is. So, MD input container. Let me try everything right. MD select. Um, and then MD option, you know, values that, 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 that. Okay, uh, what am I missing? Okay, let me go. Um, let me go back to this and uh, just right up and look at the example. So MD input container model, okay, that placeholder, value, MD value. Uh, no, that's not, um, I guess, ND value. Is that why it might be acting up? Mm, I think that NG. NG. NG value. Mm. I don't think that should be it, though. Okay. Uh, let's refresh this and see. Yeah, still looking weird. Uh, I did this before, not today, I think. Oh, no wonder. Ah, jeez. MD dash that. See, that's why you don't have a nice editor that would take care of silly things like making sure that all the end tag and start tag are the same. So, yeah. And so this is not really the issue, and you can leave it as just value. So the, app, the thing is, well, I didn't make sure that my end and start tag all match. And so that's why I couldn't render properly. And there you go. It's rendered properly now. All right? And notice the animation when I click on thing, how you see like something, um, the location where I clicked, it kind of something like ripple out from there. So that's cool. Well, right now this is taking over, you know, the entire line. It's like one part line. And we kind of don't want it, right? We, we, we kind of would rather if um, this for the form at least, um, here these things were all in the same line. So why don't we say um, that, um, you know, 
we could do the same thing. We could say we have layout and you can say layout equals row, just like you have to go to a column up there. But let me just leave it without specifying. I think the default is row anyway. So uh, it's not row, but it made it, it, made it smaller. Um, so let's do equals row and let's refresh. Hey, why isn't it? Um, ah, okay. Um, that's because it's the children of this that we want to, um, so the children of each one of these in the container we want to be in a row. So I'll have to do diff layout equals, ah, and again, I'll leave it because I, I believe that's how it just does row by, by default. So I'm going to copy all this here in the form and cut and I'll paste it in here. And I'm going to say save. That's beautiful. It's not wrong with having something looking beautiful. And so there we go. And this is a little small, and this is probably right size, but then these buttons look a little squished up, and I really don't like that. And so um, what we can do is we can say that this container, I want the flex size to be, you know, I don't know, uh, let's say. 50% or something like that and you know there it is right and that seems reasonable and this one I could say um, you know progress bar flex equals like 20% or something like that and that seems reasonable and um, the buttons I don't like how the high the buttons are um, so why is that coming out that way um, So for buttons, um, I could put some flex on them too. Um, you know, I could say flex, and they're gonna really take up the remaining space between them. Um, but then look how big that is, and I really don't like it, uh, like them that big. Um, so I'm gonna use the MD button instead, MD button instead of just regular button, and they should be smarter about how they render, hopefully. Okay. And there we go, right? And so those look much nicer, uh, but they look flat. So there's an option I can pass that says MD raised, um, MD that raised, and now um, if I refresh, save and refresh. Okay, did I save? Save and refresh. They should show up as raised. Oh, of course my um, I. I keep forgetting to do this. I have to make sure um, to save. Um, so now I have the individual buttons, but I'm not seeing them as raised. Um, okay, so let's go back when in doubt. Go back here to your directive and look it up. So do MD button, and then um, so the flat button is just doing MD button alone. Oh, class equals MD raise. So I have to say class equals MD raise. Tap the raise button. And I could do stuff like MD primary also. Um, I think they use the MD primary that goes into the class also. So let's do that. Let's say class equals MD raise. And I want my primary button to be save button, so I'm doing MD that primary. And let's save it and let's go back to our application, refresh, and now it's raised and our app is looking a lot better than before. Okay? Then you think? Okay. All right? Notice what we get. Now when you click on stuff, you, it tells you that you have to fill out field, even though this one for clear shouldn't do that, but I know why, it's because in, in our code, we call clear that set this to empty, and because, um, you know, it said that's required, hence it's, to give, it's telling us that message, because we actually set it in code to empty, so that's why. But, but, but that's pretty cool, right? Look how much nicer our application looks already, just by going to Angular Material. Um, see, we could, we're nearly the time here. So the only thing it looked like we need, we should try and fix up is um, our table here. 
So let's see, why don't we use like a grid? Let's look at their demo. And so there's a list we can use. We can use a list to list things out. Mm -hmm. That's a possibility, you know, the list. Mm -hmm. um, different columns and stuff. Um, or we could potentially use a grid, grid list. And so, hmm. I don't think grid list is kind of like we want. So I think it's just a list is, is what we probably really want to do. Okay. So why don't we do that? Uh, we can look at basic usage by clicking at this. And so inside of MD content, we can put MD list. We could put a heading for our a subheader and then the list items and then a list item and then we could do an MD divider, another subheader and then another MD list. So yeah. So the general idea is MD list and then MD list item. Okay, so inside the list you have list item and we're not gonna worry about sub editors and stuff. Um, we could use a sub editor to, 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 talk, to say, put, give um, for our description and then below it, the status we could put in, oh, we could see, we could experiment, but let's just get it working based in the basic form first before we think about doing something fancy. So here we are, we don't need this horizontal rule anymore. Um, what we're gonna do is another md-content and inside there, um, we, we, we're not gonna be looking up output in our code. We haven't been using that forever. So we're not gonna do table. And so um, we'll talk about header. We could see if there's something like a header that we want you know, to be able to do that. But let's just keep going. So progress and action. So why don't we do this? So it looks like if we do an md-list and then um, within the list, we want a, a md-list-item and for each MD list item, which we can actually repeat. So it's gonna be this guy. We wanna do all the to-dos, and we wanna create multiple uh, list items for each to-do. And then within each one of them, uh, we, what we wanna display? Uh, we actually wanna do like, you know, uh, what, um, let's, so here, we we'll put in the buttons and all this other stuff. So let's just copy, paste some of that stuff back here. And of course, we don't need these table rows and all this other stuff, but um, we need some way to separate these things. So um, we'll figure out that just now. And we know that we want MD-buttons instead. Those looks much nicer, MD-button. MD dash button. We don't want to forget that because they don't render properly. And we don't want this, right? Uh, we don't want this. We'll figure out uh, what we might want to do is uh, within here, the description, we probably want to wrap this in a H2 style, maybe like an H3 tag, probably, right? We might want to do that. That's why it just stand out a little bit. And let's see what mileage we have on this now. And so I think we can delete our table on this default thing, right? And let's see what this looks like. So we'll go back to our app and we'll refresh and we'll type something or we'll just save. And yeah, we know it's always gonna be a little weird because we didn't have anything to space it out, but you know, um, get milk. Oh, we do save and something else get bread. And we'll say this is um, completed. And so, okay, so this is a, this is looking pretty good, except for, you know, it's not properly aligned and all this other stuff, but um, we can certainly, you know, change the layout of it, probably put, you know, those other things below and so on. So. Let's look at their example and um, what did they do? Uh, for item, they had an image, which is this, and then they had like, you know, some class and the list item text, and they used like an H3, 
and then a paragraph to break it and then they put some text and div okay so we can copy that if we wanted to um, you know h3 h1 tag they use those um, and they put them in a column to say that those things are laid out in a column um, so we, we can we can certainly copy that <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it so um, I think I just want to copy this part and um, so each of this item we're going to put in a column these things in a column um, and I'll do diff okay and then I want these buttons probably to show up to the side um, and so these guys I'm going to do diff um, layout equals row I want those to be side by side and then um, I know I'm moving a little bit fast here because I'm already go through my 15 minutes I'm probably going at an hour now but there's a bonus video so that's okay and uh, but I'll let you play with it what the important thing is just showing you how to ingrate um, the material and then now you can play with how it looks so get milk and then save that get bread and then that's it, it's completed and now you can see the toe oh, so we gotta edit this one so let's see if our stuff from before still works and then this is in progress and then save it and it's edited and then you see something weird there that's because we first removed it from the um, thing or something and then so it was like tree and then it created but anyway uh, we get the results we want. This is updated, um, so that stuff is still working. Uh, we could, you know, certainly put this to the side of, you know, our the ID here, the number next to our stuff, and maybe we don't even need the number anymore, right? Or like, why do we need the number? That's crazy that we had that number in there. Maybe it looked fine when we had it, and we wanted to keep a list of things. We could show the number of to dos we have somewhere else. We could just have a total count somewhere. Save. right and so this is looking a lot better I don't like how this bar is showing up here but maybe we can do raise and get rid of the bar right or we could just say class equals MD raised and Um, we want these buttons to be primary. Maybe the edit one is primary. And all right, I'll end the video here because I think I demonstrated a general gist of what I wanted to show that our application could look a lot better. Um, we have a bug somewhere. Um, that's not allowing us to, um, that's not erasing this, but uh, we can t certainly take a look and see why that is. But there you have it. Um, our app seems to work and it looks a lot better. Okay, I think I spelled primary, that's why my edit button is not showing up with primary key, but um, as the primary button. But hopefully, you get the gist and uh, you like this video and, and you like Angular material. All right. Take care and thanks for watching. See you in the other videos. And then from time to time, I might think of other bonus videos. I don't maybe be another part to this one. I, I don't maybe how to send stuff to the back end. Maybe it could be a, another part to this one and continue that way. Or it might just be something else, right? All right. Take care. Bye.